Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much, Maharaj. So, thank you everyone uh, in this Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Today, we are very fortunate that we are having His Holiness Chandra Mali Swami Maharaj to enlighten us on Srimad Bhagavatam. So, thank you so much, Maharaj, for giving a valuable association and time. So, thank you so much. Now, I would like to hand over the call to you, Maharaj. Thank you so much for giving your valuable association. Hare Krishna. <clears throat> You can bring the uh, verse up on the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, Srimad Bhagavatam, fourth canto, twenty ninth chapter, eighty fourth verse. Etam Mukunta Yashisa Bhuvana Punanam Devar Shivarya Mukandisritam Atmasaucham Yakir Tamano Abhigachi Paramestam Nasmin Bhava Brahmati Mukta Samasta Bandaha Translation this narration, spoken by the great sage Narada, is full of transcendental fame of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Consequently, this narration, when described, certainly sanctifies this material world. It purifies the heart of the living entity and helps him attain his spiritual identity. One who relates this transcendental narration will be liberated from all material bondage will no longer have to wander within this material world. So this verse is what is called a uh, phalastuti. Phalastuti means the fruit or the benefit that one achieves from, um, as is described in the verse, from hearing this narration. As indicated in verse 79, Narada Muni advised King Prachinabhatu to take the devotional service rather than waste time performing ritualistic ceremonies and fruitive activities. So ritualistic ceremonies and fruitive activities are very common for those who have a preliminary and a very superficial understanding of spiritual life. Uh, they center their activities around receiving results from material results from religion by re performing certain ceremonies that are recommended in the Vedas. Although they perform these ceremonies very nicely, um, their desire is to elevate themselves or elevate themselves in, in the material world or to gain some material benefit. So, the, uh, so Narada Muni is speaking that these things are simply a waste of time to take to devotional service. The vivid description of the subtle and gross bodies in this chapter are most scientific. This is the narration or the analogy given. And because they are given by the great sage Narata, they are authoritative. You'll see throughout the Bhagavatam that Bhagavatam deals with factual historical events. But in this particular narration, he uses analogy. And this is the one of the few places, maybe there's only, I think there might be one more, in the whole Bhagavatam where allegory, this is more, it's more allegory than analogy, Allegory is used to give the points that are needed to be expressed rather than speaking directly philosophical teachings. Okay, continue on. Because these narrations are full of the glory of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, they constitute the most effective process for the purification of the mind. This is where the subject matter focus purifying the mind. 
as Lord Chaitanya confirmed, Chaito Darpanam Marjanam. The more we talk of Krishna, think of Krishna and preach for Krishna, the more we become purified. So here, Prabhupada sums it up, talking about Krishna more, thinking of Krishna more, and preaching for Krishna more, then purification becomes quicker and more complete. This means we no longer have to accept a hallucinatory, gross and subtle body, but instead attain our spiritual identity. So we have a body, and this body is one of many bodies that we've had throughout countless lives in the material world. It's hallucinatory, hallucinatory because it stays out for some times and then it's gone. And then we accept another body and our identity changes according to the body we have. So that's why it's called hallucinatory. It's more like a dream. As we dream at night and accept various types of images that appear in the dream to be what is happening to us at the time of the dream, in the same way we are in this hallucinatory material world and we get a gross body and a subtle body and then we identify with that as us, but this is all an illusion. As Prabhupada says, then after some time when we perform devotional service completely, we get a spiritual body or we our spiritual identity awakens, which is our real and permanent identity. One who tries to understand this instructive spiritual knowledge is delivered from this ocean of nations. So this uh, thing, knowledge, spiritual knowledge, is real knowledge. Material knowledge simply has to do with this material body. And like the material body, it is also hallucinatory. So real knowledge is spiritual knowledge. And why? Because it frees us from all suffering and delivers us in full to fulfill all our desires permanently and completely. The word paramestyam is very significant in this connection. Paramestyam is also called Brahmaloka. It is the planet on which Lord Brahma lives. The inhabitants of Brahma Loka always discuss such narrations. So after the annihilation of the material world, they can be directly transferred to the spiritual world. One who is transferred to the spiritual world does not have to go up and down within this material world. Sometimes spiritual activities are also called paramestam. So this word paramestam has two meanings. One, is that those who, the Brahmaloka is called Paramestam, but spiritual activities or those activities that elevate us to the spiritual world are called Paramestam. Now, this is an interesting analogy, not analogy, but an interesting description because when the inhabitants of Brahmaloka engage in devotional service, they elevate them to the spirit, some of themselves to the spiritual world. And spiritual activities are also called paramesim. They bring us to the spiritual world. No matter where we are, the spiritual activities are called paramesim, which, which means spiritually elevating activities. Okay, so this is the conclusion of the purport. Om Agyan Timidanda Syagana Jana Salakaya Chaksu Umilitam Yena Tas my Sri Guru Veda Maha Sri Chaitanya Menobistam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Gitam Mayam Dadati Swam Padanti Kam Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasdaya Bhutale Sri Makti Bhakti Vedanta Swami Itinamine Namaste Saraswati Devi Gorbani Pachari ne never say Sasunyavari Pasyatiri Satarine Vanshakalpa Tarupis Chakri Pasindu Pay Vacha Patitanam Pavane Bio 
Vaishnavibhyo Namaha Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasiri Gaur Bhakti Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So what goes on today uh, as the as spiritual activities are basically centered around the statement made in the purport where King Prachina Bharhisya is interested in ritualistic activities and activities for food and gain. Uh, the majority of the living entities who take up spiritual life see spiritual life as opportunity to further material uh, desires or successes. That's why it's quite common. You see people pray to the Lord for a better material situation, to fulfill material desires, to uh, relieve one from material sufferings. In other words, uh, the common people generally who take up any kind of religious or spiritual life is motivated by uh, gain in material life. Um, and there is another aspect which is not mentioned in this particular purport, but there is another class of people who perform spiritual life in order to realize themselves as the supreme. These are known as mayavadis or people who take things out of context and think that because the living entity is part and parcel of, or is, is the same nature as the supreme, the living entity is also the supreme. So in both categories of misconceptions or what we say uh, deviations from pure spiritual principles, the main, the main thing is that, uh, oh, wait a minute. yeah, I, had, I lost my train. The main thing is that uh, spiritual life is about me. <laughs> It's about bettering my situation in one form or another. And therefore, uh, we find it very difficult to find people, very few people in this world actually know what is and perform real spiritual activities. As Srimad Bhagavatam explains, Dharma Projita Kaitavo. Uh, this is from the second verse of Srimad Bhagavatam in the very beginning, where it says that this Srimad Bhagavatam fully destroys or relieves, as Prabhupada says, kicks out any cheating type of religious activities. It simply deals with to, to hear and chant the glories of the Lord, completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated this Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable to those devotees who are pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within the heart. So here, both relieving the ignorance and establishing the truth is, st is stated within this translation. So as we say, there are four activities of the living entity in the material world. Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. And everyone in this material world is interested in, in getting benefits from one or more of these activities. Nowadays, people don't perform much Dharma. They're mostly they're into Artha and Kama. Artha means economic development, Kama, Kama means sense gratification. That is the theme, the trend, the mood of people in general in this, 
age of Kali Yuga. They don't even see any benefit of performing any kind of pious activities. But those who are a little bit higher elevated, they perform Dharma. In other words, they are morally guided, morally uh, motivated, and they perform pious and spiritual, uh, religious activities, not spiritual, but religious activities in order to gain material. So it's very rare that you find anyone that who, uh, who knows what is actually the goal of religion. Most people have no idea what religion is, what is the goal of religion, what is the purpose of religion, how to perform religious activities. Everyone just, what we say, very functionarily does a little bit of uh, worship to the, to the Lord and prays for better material uh, situations, circumstances. Now, Krishna doesn't reject this, but this is only a preliminary to get connected. But when one actually comes to devotional service, then one starts to understand what is the purpose of devotional service. <clears throat> The real purpose of devotional service is to render loving devotional service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead for the pleasure of the Lord. This is devotional service in essence. If someone were to ask you, what is devotional service? It means to serve the Lord, to please the Lord. Of course, one has to know how to please the Lord and learning how to please the Lord means to accept the message of pleasing the Lord coming from the Lord's pure devotee, the bona fide spiritual master, who is engaged in devotional service and knows how to please the Lord. <clears throat> so one who learns from that personality also becomes situated on the, spirit, on the liberated platform. And eventually as they practice, they will reach the pure spiritual platform. Now, this is not foreign to our nature, even in the material sense, because everyone is serving in one capacity to another. People don't use the word service. They sometimes think these are my activities. But when you look at the activities, how they're directed, everyone is serving some category of persons. The husband is serving the wife and the family. The wife is serving the husband and the children. Uh, the, the man going to work is serving his boss. Everyone is serving. Some people are serving each other through various philosophical and welfare activities. And, and if no one is serving in these capacities, then they're simply serving the only the desires of their mind. And as Prabhupada sometimes says, that sometimes they have no one to serve, so they get some pet dog and they uh, serve that dog. So everyone has to serve. The service principle is innate in the, in the living entity. You can't stop serving. It's the question of how that service manifests. And even in this world, people want to please their dog, their husband, their wife, their children, their boss, their own mind. So therefore, the motivation for service generally is the same as, or not the motivation, but the pattern of service is the same when you look at it from both the material and spiritual perspectives. The only difference is the focus is on the Supreme Lord, which is our constitutional nature. Jivir Surupoi Krishnera Nityadas. All living entities are eternally servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, either in the Vaikuntha realm, serving the Lord in his four-handed form as Narayan or Vishnu, or serving the Lord in his two-handed uh, transcendental form in the highest realm of spiritual existence, Sri Goloka Vrindavan. In either case, it is directed to the personality of Godhead, not to the impersonal. Uh, you cannot serve something that is not personal. 
it's like some people say, well, I'm serving my computer, I'm serving my car, I'm serving my, you know, something, some inanimate object. But because we are person, we have to serve also something that is of the same nature, personal. Otherwise, there's no question of service. It's just usage. You use your computer, you use your car. You're not serving them because they're not animate. They're dull, dull, dull matter. Therefore, one has to serve something that is sentient, that has consciousness. So serving the Supreme Personality of Godhead is natural. <laughs> it is natural using the analogy of breathing, just like it is natural to breathe in this uh, world we live in, we have a material body. It's so natural, we don't even think about it. It just happens. So it's natural, to na nature and natural, these, this uh, uh, junction of two words which are similar in meaning, what, what is our nature is natural. And so what is natural is in, in connection to our nature. So to love and serve, and of course, the principle of love is the principle of the goal of service, to exchange love, just like we try to exchange love with, between friends, between uh, family members. Maybe we even try to love our broader society by doing work for people in general to, to elevate them to a better material situation. So this mood of love or compassion, the mood of extending oneself in a, an affectionate way towards other living entities is also part of the, the uh, quality of our existence. Because it says that love is actually the goal of service. Service not for the service in order to reach in a loving exchange with the object of service, ultimately. Because unless the living entity comes to the platform of love, they remain incomplete in their service. Mm -hmm. One can serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead in a formal way, in, in a way that is without loving mood, but that, love, that kind of service simply relegates one to the, uh, to the uh, results of uh, uh, liberation, but what doesn't get to the, to the platform of love. Love is beyond liberation, and love is actually uh, the innate quality of all living entities. So to love and serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead is uh, normal. So those who are not doing that, they're not normal. <laughs> These are the words of Srila Prabhupada. <laughs> so therefore, this uh, movement started by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and expanded by the Acharyas coming all the way down to Srila Prabhupada and his representatives is a mood of bhakti or devotion to serve the Lord, to awaken our natural love. As it says, Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sadhuka Bhumai Sravanadi Sravanadi Sudhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi this Bengali verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita says that in the hearts of all living entity, pure love for the Supreme Lord eternally exists. Chitte, it is fixed within the heart. Chitte means heart. So uh, this verse here is describing the results of hearing this narration about the supremacy of bhakti over all other forms of religious and spiritual activities. So one who hears this narration and maybe reads it again, speaks about it to their friends and others, will gain an elevation to the spiritual world. This is a very, the Bhagavatam gives a lot of falastutis. Falastuti is um, a benediction that comes by hearing and chanting the glories of Srimad Bhagavatam. And as Prabhupada writes in his purport, 
This is the essence of elevation of our consciousness. To hear more about Krishna, to chant more about Krishna, and to preach more about Krishna, as he mentions there. So he sums it up in a very simplified understanding. So devotional service is not so hard when you understand it in, in its very simple terms. Hear more about Krishna, chant more about Krishna, and talk more about Krishna. Talk, I mean, and, and give, that, give that knowledge of Krishna to others in one way or another. Okay, so we can stop here and see if there's any uh, comments or questions. Yeah, Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Maharaj, for the nice points on this verse. But I have one general question. Like uh, the numbering on the numbering looks different, Maharaj. After a verse uh, 85, right? Uh, let me see, Maharaj. After some verses in the last uh, three verses, the numbering is different, Maharaj. Like uh, after uh, 80, 85. Then mm -hmm. it goes back to 29.1A to A, Maharaj, and 29.1B, right? Just trying to see, Maharaj, why these are numbered this way. It's, yeah, it's mentioned that one sage from the uh, the uh, Madhvacharya, I think it's Vijaya, Vijaya Acharya, I can't remember his full name, has mentioned that these four verses, 1a, 1b, 2, 2a, and 2b, are to be placed within the uh, larger stream of the entire verses. So that's mentioned within there. So yeah, so it's mentioned there. Okay, okay, Maharaj, maybe it will come next. Uh, so it's just that they, these are these are verses that belong within the, the text, but didn't get put into the text. So they're put on as an addendum to the text at the end. Okay, okay, Maharaj, yeah. yeah. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, I think Sugopi had a, had a, ver had a, had a question. Mm -hmm. Hi, Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Prabhupada. I was wondering, uh, you were talking about service and I was wondering for neophyte devotees like me, how how would I know if Krishna is pleased or not with my service? Yeah, that question has been asked to Srila Prabhupada many times. He says, because you're a part and parcel of Krishna and devotional service connects you with Krishna. So when Krishna is pleased, you also feel pleased. Thank you very much. Yeah. Because as soon as you do devotional service, you connect. And soon because of that connection, you experience the, that the same thing. Krishna is pleased, you're pleased. If Krishna is not pleased, then you don't feel that satisfaction of your, your activity. Thank you so much, Mark. It took me almost 15 minutes to get onto the onto the onto the Zoom program today because Krishna wasn't pleased. <laughs> I couldn't get on. <laughs> I tried everything. Usually I do it in about 10 seconds. Now it took me more than 10 minutes to get on. So. So you know it's the same activity, but Krishna wasn't pleased, so I couldn't get I couldn't get on. <laughs> Finally, he he decided to show some mercy. Hare 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, Tandavat Pranam. Thank you so much for the wonderful class. Maharaj, there is a question on the chat also. Uh, do you want me to read it, Maharaj? Uh, put it up and read it at the same time. Okay. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj. This is from Bhakta Roberto. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, dear Maharaj. How can we feel Krishna's presence more when we are serving him? Your servant, Roberto. Um, well, <clears throat> there is a way, but there is another answer to that question, which was given by Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. And don't try to see Krishna, but try to serve Krishna in such a way that Krishna wants to see you. So don't worry about feeling Krishna or seeing Krishna, try to think how best to serve Krishna. And when Krishna is pleased, he'll reveal himself in different ways. Well, one of the ways is that when the mood of devotional service, which is very, which, would, which allows us to feel the presence of Krishna more and more, is the mood of humility. So one who serves in a humble way um, and develops that mood of humility continuously can experience the presence of Krishna more and more. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, so, okay, so if I'm, I'm pot washing for Krishna, so I should think like, oh, let me do such a nice service to him so that, you know, he would, uh, if he actually comes to the, the pot washing area afterwards, he would be really pleased. Uh, or should I also, when I'm pot washing, to think about, uh, think about him and, uh, you know, trying to, you know, lovingly do the service? That's up to you. It says that in the beginning stages when we practice bhakti, we start, we become absorbed in the activity. But as we develop our Krishna consciousness, then as along with the activity, we want to remember Krishna more and more. You can practice both at the same time. So it's like I do, I do kind of find it uh, much more absorbing if when I'm actually reminding myself of who am I doing this, uh, that he's a person, that I'm personally, like, you know, this is kind of, a, you know, a personal service and, and, you know, to remind my mind that, you know, it's a person that they're serving that. Yes, that's, that's very good. Yeah, you should do that. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Guru Maharaj, Hare Krishna, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to your holiness. In the course of today's lecture, Guru Maharaj, which was again a wonderful lecture, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, Sri Devi, you lower, lower your volume, it's too loud. I'm sorry, okay. You said that devotional service means to serve Lord, to please the Lord, and learn how to please the Lord means learning from the pure spiritual master. One who follows in this way becomes liberated and then comes to the pure stage. So as I was writing this, I was thinking, is becoming liberated a preliminary stage before we come to the pure stage? And what is that liberation we are talking about? Yeah, as soon as you engage in devotional service, devotional service is not part of the three modes of material nature. It's transcendental. So it's on the liberated platform. So you, you may not understand it, but as soon as you're engaged in devotional service, you're already liberated. You connect with the spiritual energy and you are, you develop the same characteristic. 
And then as you practice that devotional service, your consciousness comes to the, comes higher and higher, eventually to the stage of loving Krishna. Loving Krishna may not be there in the beginning, but as soon as you engage in devotional service, you are on the liberated platform. Devotional service is not part of this material world. <clears throat> It's Krishna's internal energy <clears throat> governed by Srimati Radharani herself. She is Bhakti Devi. She's in charge of pure devotional service. Thank you so much, Guru Maharaj. And I have another very quick practical question. Yeah, on... give everybody, you know, I mean, there's 50 okay. people. I mean, you come back later after, with the second question. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, is there anyone else? Hare Krishna, thank you so much Maharaj for such a wonderful class. So if uh, no one has any question or uh, don't want to share any realization now, so we can stop here. Uh -huh. Mataji, uh, that Sudevi Mataji has the question. Sri Devi. Okay. Mata. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Guru Maharaj, my question is just a simple uh, practical question. Um, there may be an opportunity to do a Diwali program in a homeless shelter possibly. Now, uh, is it all right to just ask the people to offer a candle instead of a ghee lamp, which may not be practical? <laughs> <laughs> You asked the wrong person for that question. <laughs> or if you recommend the ghee lamp, then how to do it in such a way that there's not this problem of, oh, this hot ghee fell on my hand and I got burnt and this and that. Why are you asking these questions that that are common sense, practical things. These are, just figure that one out yourself. Okay, Guru Maharaj, sorry. Yeah, you... you should ask questions that are about the topic that we're discussing now. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Our glory is to Srila Prabhupada and our glory is to you. Uh, you spoke about that uh, the, the goal of our uh, spiritual life is to please Krishna and uh, that we shouldn't have any, uh, any personal motives, uh, motivations in, in, in it. And uh, I just remembered that uh, so many times I, I uh, don't even uh, notice but, uh, but my spiritual practices uh, have this, uh, also this mood that I want to ex uh, escape uh, suffering or something like that. So I was just thinking, how can I uh, make sure that I always, always have uh, uh, Krishna's, Krishna's pleasure in my, uh, in my focus? Yeah, this is a process. <clears throat> we may not be able to jump up to the, the ideal stage from where we are, but it doesn't mean because you have these, what we say, personal concerns, which are just very simplified bodily needs, that you can't render service. It's a process. As, as you purify your consciousness through chanting and serving, and as you start to realize the goal of Krishna consciousness, then these things start to fall away. Yeah. 
so um, is it uh, does it mean that uh, at this point uh, this is uh, this uh, not um, how to say this uh, mixed uh, devotional service? Yeah, there are, actually there are within the Ranti. purified uh, uh, while doing the process yeah, it's mixed yeah but that's okay doesn't mean because it's mixed you shouldn't do it but you can pray to krishna to, to free you from these tendencies these material desires and to to this is part of the process not only do we render service but we also offer prayers in order to awaken bhakti and to remove those things that are blocking our natural bhakti so yeah you can focus away from these things through the through the mood of prayer and focus on the pure devotional activity in the mood of prayer also i see thank you very much it uh, it was really really helpful thank you Hare krishna thank you Hare krishna Sugopi, you have another question? I didn't think of another one, Maharaj. I'm just listening. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, so is there anyone else out there? Shamagori, are you with us? <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my mother's obeisances. Oh, Krishna, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Maharaj, for your association. It's wonderful for you. Class every Friday. It's so nice. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm seeing your lovely home behind you, remembering <laughs> how, I used, how I used to run around. Yeah. yeah, this lockdown has benefits, but it also has drawbacks. The drawbacks is that we're not able to interact so much with other devotees. Yes. So we uh, take advantage of the benefits by increasing our hearing and chanting and yes, preaching, but... We look forward to one weekend again as the society come together in our temples and in, in our programs. This yeah. is, uh, I think this is the desire of most of our devotees. And yes, this, this lockdown has benefits because we can study more, we can chat more, we can, I mean, I'm giving two classes a day on the average. And I never used to do that when I would travel. Yeah. <laughs> that was rare, sometimes would happen. So from that perspective, there is much, much spiritual advantage. But then again, Sadhu Sangha is the, uh, the mood of Vaishnavas. Vaishnavas always like to come together, chant, dance, and take prasad, <laughs> and discuss philosophical and spiritual teachings. Thank you, Maharaj. And please bless us. We will have like a chant more and more, do study Bhagavatam and all the Prabhupada's book. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai Ho. Pavitra, how are we doing? Yes, ma yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Maharaj. Thank you for the wonderful association. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much, Maharaj. It's so valuable to associate with uh, you. And uh, it's your mercy only that uh, you are coming. 
we are so grateful to you so thank you so much maharaj i'm getting so many thank yous i don't know what to do <laughs> please bless us <laughs> maharaj you can you just accept those thank you <laughs> i really i appreciate your your very uh, warm spiritual expressions but can i tell you something that will destroy everything <laughs> yes okay that in vedic culture mm -hmm. the whole idea of saying thank you is not is not part of any exchange nobody says thank you why because the person who serves is the person who benefits oh. So therefore, this idea of thank you is just a uh, the thing that has come up because of Western culture, the connection with Western culture, yes. where everyone knows they think that the person who is getting is the one that's benefiting, but in Vedic culture, it's the person who's serving is the one that's benefiting. Very <clears throat> important. Therefore, people who didn't usually say thank you, they would say Hare Krishna, say <laughs> like that. Hare Krishna. So oh, now you're going to tell me thank you again. So, <laughs> Maharaj, we only get uh, uh, yeah, by our uh, darshan only we get mercy. Darshan e pavitra kare yehi to maragun. So if we are not get benefited anywhere, like we are getting benefited by your darshan also. So we are fortunate to have your darshan also on every Fridays. Yeah, let's let's pay our obeisances to Maharaj. Mancha kalpana. Anand Koti Vaishnavandi ki jai, Shri La Prabhupada ki jai, Shri Mad Bhagavatam ki jai, His Holiness Chandra Mauli Swami Maharaj ki jai. Thank you so much.